Hey everyone, it's Alex Noonan here with Noonan Labs, and today I'm going to be going over a project I did in Dagster, which was a data pipeline for Spotify ads to be integrated into our data warehouse at Linden Digital Marketing. And uh, for this video, I'm going to be going over data orchestration, what is Dagster, and a little bit of the particulars with the project, which include um, the data pipeline ingestion with Spotify Python scripts, um, integrating that with BigQuery, and then how to fit DBT into a Dagster project. So, what is data orchestration? To put it simply, data orchestration is the process of tying it all together. And whenever you're doing a data pipeline or just working in data in general, uh, you're going to have different entities that you're interacting with. And uh, for this like simple pipeline example here, I have at the beginning, we have the source systems. There needs to be some sort of process to ingest them into your warehouse or database. You will have transformation logic to match them to your reporting and business needs. And then finally, you'll have consumption, whether that's in regular reports, alerting, business intelligence tool, or machine learning. And orchestration is the process of scheduling this whole evolution, creating the visibility to the team you're on or the organization, having metadata for the, these processes, and finally making sure you can like test everything at each stage so you can have confidence that your pipelines are working properly. So this is Dagster and it's a data orchestration tool. Uh, what's cool about it is it's all in Python, so it makes it pretty easy to get started and get going. And it's something I noticed that um, as a self-taught data engineer, the structure of the project and how you're supposed to like work with the code really made me, I think, stronger as a data engineer because it forced me to get better with uh, version control and uh, file structure and like managing dependencies, which are all things you kind of don't um, interact with if you're learning through school or you're self-taught. And um, one thing I really like about it is it's pretty slick and has a modern feel to it. So um, everything is grouped by assets um, when it comes to data, and that can either be a report, a data set, a DBT model, anything like that. And I really like the global asset lineage view because you can kind of see, or you can see your entire data infrastructure in one view. And uh, for example, you can see whether assets, when's the last time they materialized, what's dependent on what, whether they're Python DBT, if they have any checks associated with them. And um, they also have a lot of rich meta metadata so you can see um, the results of runs and like how long they took. So it's pretty cool. Big fan. Quick overview of the project before I show some of the code items. Um, for the integration process, um, the source we're working with is the Spotify Ads API. And the data we want to have is basically this star schema showing the different performance for all our various ads and accounts. And the dimensions are broken out by accounts, ads, campaigns and ad sets and then for the fact table we're doing the daily ad statistics because that's the level of grain we need to report on and um, the workflow as far as the Dagster process is we are going to be refreshing our dimension tables so doing full uh, pull and append uh, from the API endpoints for those and then we're rebuilding the fact table for the past 90 days. And the reason for that is whenever you're working with any of these ad platforms, um, your spend levels and any of your other engagement metrics are often like overwritten over time. So to avoid any of those like ambiguities, uh, I'm just simply taking the last 90 days history and pulling down and rebuilding that uh, each time it runs. And then we're using DBT assets for each of these uh, tables here. Um, so we can like map types correctly, resolve errors, and uh, have cleaner tables for analysis. 
And then on all the dimension tables, I put in some simple unique ID tests, so we're cleaning any duplicates. And then finally, this whole process needs to run on a daily cadence. All right, so here we are in VS Code, where we have uh, the Daxter project that I've been discussing. And uh, the first thing you should notice is the project structure. And um, on the left here, we have the, uh, the files for that. And uh, in the, the like main folder, you have all the config elements, um, your environment variables, uh, the stuff you need to deploy requirements and do all the setup. And then um, as far as these folders, um, the DBD project and the Daxter project are in the same folder level. And then I have a virtual environment here uh, to keep all the packages consistent. And then once we go inside the Daxter project, we have the init, the init file, which over here is basically our definitions, where it kind of ties everything together. Then we have our assets, our jobs, partitions, resources, and then schedules. And um, so next I'll go into the files that comprise those. Uh, the assets, which um, what's happening here is the Spotify assets are being loaded in from that, the ingestion folder in here. And then the dbt assets are loaded through this line of code here where we have a CLI resource being defined. And then this statement here is basically saying if there isn't an existing dbt uh, manifest JSON file to create one. And then the dbt assets are loaded through this command here, which is basically telling dbt to build uh, the project since it's pretty simple here. And then uh, this is kind of the biggest chunk of the project where it's all the ingestion scripts and the assets for the various dimensions from Spotify ads. And the uh, functions I have up here are like helper functions to help with calculations because when I was getting the ad stats, um, what I'm doing is for each ad, I'm getting the current month's worth of data. So it involves some like date time calculations and then um, the function to get the stats and append it to the main data frame for that. And for the assets, um, the ingestion assets, this follows a very similar pattern. Uh, if you've been doing this data engineering thing, uh, the tried and true method of hitting a REST API endpoint, extracting the data as a JSON file, loading that into some grid, like a data pan, uh, pandas data frame, and then loading that into the um, into BigQuery. And since we defined the I.O. manager um, at the definitions level, we don't have to like write all the individual um, destinations and reads in here. So that saves a ton of time. It kind of simplifies your code. But with I.O. managers, you kind of trade off a lot of controls you have, whereas if you were to use a resource. And then jobs, um, pretty simple. We have the all asset job right here. And then for the incremental update, I have these asterisks to pull uh, these specific dbt assets, but everything upstream of them as well. So we get a full re refresh for those jobs. And then a simple cron job here for every day at midnight. And, um, and onto the dbt project. Um, if you're familiar with these, we got the the project config YAML file, the profiles file, and then our models in here. And uh, for these, I have they're pretty simple SQL statements. This is kind of the most complex one, which is the um, analysis table, which kind of like merges everything together uh, into the a one big table framework. So um, I did all the like type ma uh, casting and column cleanups. Uh, incrementally throughout the process. And then um, what's also cool about dbt is if you do the schema file, you can set some like very simple tests, tests that you'll come across here. And um, yeah, here for the different IDs, we have a unique test check. Uh, 
if you're going to do this in production, you're going to have a lot more tests um, just so your like data can be more consistent. But that is um, kind of a high level overview of a lot of the like kind of quirks about like tying the whole project together. The entire repo uh, that you can look at at your leisure or maybe use yourself, I don't know, will be in the description below. Um, if you have any questions, uh, leave a comment on the video. And um, you can always hit me up on Twitter or LinkedIn as well. Uh, and those links will be in the description as well. <coughs> did you enjoy the video? Uh, if you did, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss an update. And if you like this kind of like data engineering um, content as opposed to the analysis stuff I said previously, did you enjoy the video? Uh, if you did, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss an update. And if you like this kind of like data engineering um, content as opposed to the analysis stuff I said previously, please let me know and I'll try to make more of that in the future.